Welcome to episode 3 of the Witcher lore series. We learned about the Northern Kingdoms in the last episode. Today, we will continue on with part 2 of Geography and Politics of the Witcher World, featuring the Nilfgaardian Empire and the Skellige Islands. The Nilfgaardian Empire solely occupies the southern continent, its banner of the Golden Sun ruling over a landmass twice as vast as all the Northern Kingdoms combined. The rise of Nilfgaard can be attributed to three major factors. Firstly, a strong, stable, and varied economic and trading system making up the financial backbone of the empire. Secondly, a powerful, well-trained imperial army that fulfills the empire's military endeavors. Lastly, a centralized, effective, absolute monarchy. The Nilfgaardian Empire had its modest origins in its capital, Nilfgaard of the Golden Sun, at the most southern stretch of the continent. Through hundreds of years of development, Nilfgaard's expansionist nature led its black-coated legions well beyond its home province, conquering northwards at an, at an incredible pace through the regions of Etolia, Ebbing, Metna, and Nazare, all the way to the southern banks of the Yaruga. And during the current Emperor Emir Var Emrys' rule, Nilfgaardians crossed the river and annexed Sintra, slaughtering tens of thousands. So much blood was spilt that many northerners shiver merely at the mentioning of what was the massacre of Sintra. An interesting parallel can be made between Nilfgaard and the Roman Empire, both being totalitarian states with military expansion and cultural assimilation at their cores. The Romans had to face a coalition of Gallic and Celtic tribes as they marched northwards into Europe's heartland while Nilfgaardians had to face the coalition of the Northern Kingdoms led by Redania, Temeria, and Kedwin. The Romans seek to assimilate conquered peoples both in terms of language and religion. They brought Latin to the edges of the empire and also converted many to believe in the Roman gods. Nilfgaard, on the other hand, introduces the Nilfgaardian language as well as its prominent religion, the Cult of the Great Sun, to its conquered regions. The most interesting parallel, however, can be drawn from a specific aspect of culture. The belief of superiority based on natural born citizenship. Romans born in the Italian peninsula believed that they were the true citizens of Rome and condescended upon the sight of conquered peoples calling themselves Romans, even though they are equal citizens by law. The same goes for Nilfgaardians. Those born in the Nilfgaard's heartland consider themselves far superior than citizens born in conquered provinces. Currently, Nilfgaard is under the rule of Emperor Emir Var Emrys. His throne has been relatively stable during the First Northern War, in which he conquered Sintra. But after an unsuccessful Second Northern incursion, his authority is being undermined and shaken up by internal opposition. Emir knows that in order to quell his internal enemies and keep his reputation high among his people, he must venture north again. They all say, third time's a charm, but Emir knows he cannot rely on luck. He can only depend on a perfect execution of his exquisitely conceived master plan. We will discuss the Nilfgaard Nordling Wars in detail in the next episode. For now, let's hop on a galleon. A week sail southwest from the free city of Novigrad is the Skellige Islands. Skellige consists of six islands, Ard Skellige, On Skellige, Faro, Hindersfjall, Spikarug, and Undvik. If you remember some basic elven from last episode, you would know that Ard means greater and On means lesser. Ard Skellige, or Greater Skellige, the largest island among the six, is a home to a major majority of Skelligans and where the port capital of Kaer Trolda is located. The word Kaer, if you recall from last episode when we talked about Kaer Morhen, the Witcher School of Wolves, means keep or castle in Elder Speech. Kaer Trolda is the seat of Clan on Crate. Its leader or Jarl is Crack on Crate, one of the five Jarls of the Skellige Islands. There are six islands and only five Jarls because Unvik was abandoned long ago after the appearance of an ice giant and remained ever so mysterious since. Skellige's political system is an elective monarchy. This means that the king of Skellige is elected by the elders of influential clans and have nowhere near enough power as the continental monarchs do. He would need the support of the clans to accomplish anything. 
Historically, the king of Skellige has mostly originated from two clans. Clan on Crete, which controls Greater Skellige, and Clan Tershech, which controls On Skellige, or Lesser Skellige. The current king, Bran, is from Clan Tershach and is very well respected. If the Nilfgaardians are Romans, Skelligans would resemble Vikings, having a very rough, seafaring-based culture. Skelligans are as generous as friends could be and as fierce as enemies could go. The Skellige economy is mostly based on fishing, as most islands are barren, but pirating is also rampant. Battle-hardened Skellige warriors use long axes as their primary weapons when they raid foreign shores and are feared by continentals who tell horrifying tales of their raids and battles to children who behave badly. Battles and wars are an essential part of Witcher lore, so in the next episode I will talk about the biggest, bloodiest wars in Witcher history, the Nilfgaard Nordling Wars. Thanks for watching, and remember, don't ever piss off a Skelligan.